All right, this is uh, geometry section 11, I'm sorry, 16.1 homework. I've made this video several times. Uh, this is take number five. I'm just gonna walk you through this and just talk through it. I already got the work here because I don't wanna rewrite this out a fifth time. Draw an angle with a given measure and standard position. Standard position has the initial side on the positive x-axis, vertex at the origin. I would mark the quadrantal angles from 0 to 360. 330 falls between 270 and 360. That's why this ends up in quadrant 3. Number 2 is a negative angle, so it's going to go clockwise. I would label the quadrantal angles by negatives, negative 90, 180, 270. 115 negative is between 90 and 180 negative, so that's why it's in quadrant 3. Number three, negative 290. Once again, I measure the quadrantal angles, negative 90, negative 180, negative 270, negative 360. Negative 290 is a little bit more than 270, about 20 more. So that's gonna make this in quadrant one. Number four, 440. A complete revolution is 360. If I go 90 more, it gives me to the positive y axis, that's 450. 440 is between 360 and 450. That's why this angle ends up in quadrant one. Five, find the measure of each angle. Well, I said this was 210 because it's 90 degrees from here to here and then 20 more. So 90 and 20 is 110. Number six, I said this was 750 degrees. That's because we're gonna make two complete revolutions at 720 plus 30 degrees more makes 750. I know this is 30, because this angle here is 90. 90 minus 60 is 30. So 720 plus 30, 750. Number seven, I said it was 75. The angle from here to here is 180. We're not gonna use 105 of that. So if you take 180 minus 105, you get 75. So this angle here would be 75 degrees. 8, I had negative 410. We have a complete revolution in the negative direction. It's negative 360 plus another negative 50. That's going to make it negative 410. You might look at this and say, well, that's a positive 50. It's true, but it's just measuring the distance between these two rays. So if we go in this direction and we say negative 360 plus a 50, that's going to make this angle less than a revolution. So we need to go more than revolution, so it's negative 410. State the quadrant in which the terminal side lies. Negative 460, you could mark your quadrantal angles until you got to pass negative 460, 446, I should say. What I did was I added a revolution to this to get a coterminal angle. Negative 86 falls down here in quadrant four because it's almost negative 90, but not quite. So that's quadrant four. Number 10, 870. If I get rid of two revolutions for this, if I subtract 720 from it, I get 150. 150 is just short of 180, it falls in quadrant two. Number 11, this is within one revolution, so I just left it as negative 190. In a negative direction, this is negative 180. 10 more is negative 90, that's gonna fall into quadrant three. Number 12, 215, from here to here is 180. Here to here is 270. 215s between those, so it's in quadrant three. Find one positive and one negative coterminal angle with a given angle. Number 13, 30 degrees. To find a positive coterminal angle, I add one revolution to that, which is 360 degrees. It gives me 390. To find a negative coterminal angle, I subtract a revolution. It's 360 degrees. I get negative 330 degrees. 14 degrees, negative 705. If I add one revolution to this, it's still going to be negative. So I had two revolutions. Negative 105 plus 720 is 15 degrees. A negative coterminal angle, I take the angle that I'm given, add one revolution to it, it gives me a negative angle. So it's negative 345. Keep in mind for 13 and 14, there's an infinite number of correct answers. Find a coterminal angle between zero and 360. I got negative 45. If I had one revolution to it, I get positive 315. That's between these, so that's the only answer that works. 
16, I got 435. If I subtract the revolution from it, I get 75 degrees. That's the only angle that works for that. 17. Find all the coterminal angles. Well, first of all, the angle we're given is 175. So if I take 175, which is part of my answer, and I add to that a complete revolution, that would be plus 360. What if I make two revolutions? That would be 720. What if I made three revolutions? That would be 360 times 3. So the answer to this is 175 degrees, that's the angle and standard position, plus a complete revolution times the number of revolutions you're going to make. So k, this here says k is an element of z. That means k is an integer. So to sum up, the angle you're given plus 360 degrees times k, where k is an integer. This is going to give us all the angles that we need. If k was 0, this will be 175. If k was 1, it's 175 plus 360. If k was negative 1, it's 175 minus 360. This is going to cover every coterminal angle with 175. Number 18, same concept. We get negative 200 plus 360k, where k is an integer. Number 19, 90 degrees plus 360k, where k is an integer. 28 and 29, determine if the statement is true or false. To be true, it has to be a true 100% of the time. To be false, it just has to be false one time. If it is false, give a counterexample. The counterexample makes the hypothesis true, and it makes the conclusion false. 28, if the terminal side of an angle in standard position lies in quadrant 1, then the angle is positive. Now, that appears to be true at first, but if you look a little closer, if I go in the negative direction, I can end up in quadrant 1 and get a negative angle, so it's not positive. This is a great counterexample because the terminal side of the angle in standard position lies in quadrant 1. That part's true. The conclusion, though, is false because it's not a positive angle. 29, if the initial and terminal side of an angle coincide, then the measure of an angle is 0. I said that's false because if I go in the negative, or if I go complete revolution to this, that's 360 degrees, and that's not 0. Mixed review, it's a complex fraction. It's supposed to simplify it, multiply this by 1, the form of 4 over 4. And then you can do cross-canceling. 4 goes in the 4 once. 2 goes in the 4 twice, so we got 1 times 2, which is 2, and 3 times 1, which is 3, so we get 2 thirds. Number 2, multiply by 1, the form of 4 over 4. 2 goes in the 4 twice, 4 goes in the 4 once, so we have 1 times 2, which is 2, square root of 3 times 1, which is square root of 3. We don't want radicals in our denominator, so multiply this by 1 again, the form of square root of 3 over square root of 3. On the bottom, you multiply two radicals together. They're the same number on the inside. It just becomes that number. In the top, 2 times the square root of 3 is 2 square roots of 3. Number 3 is similar. Multiply by 4 over 4 to get rid of this denominator. It's going to give me 12 over the square root of 3. If I multiply by 1, I'm going to get 12 square roots of 3 over 3. And then 3 goes into 12 4 times, so I get 4 square roots of 3. Number 4 Sorry, all these denominators were 4s. Multiply by 4 over 4, which is the same as 1. The 4s cancel. I get square root of 3 over 4 square roots of 2. I don't want radicals in my denominator, so multiply by 1 in the form of square root of 2 over square root of 2. Square root of 3 times square root of 2 is square root of 6. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 is 2. 4 times 2 is 8. I get 6 over the square root of 8.